have a few news items today uh, we want to go through. Let me just pull up some things here. We're going to start, yeah, we'll start with this, and then we'll talk a little bit about the death of the anime industry. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, so news crossed the wire this week that anime studio Gainax is filing for bankruptcy. Um, right. To industry insiders, this was not a shock. No. But uh, we, can, we can talk about it here a little bit. This is the studio behind quite a lot of anime, actually. Um, mm -hmm. The Identity of Evangelion being probably the big one, but also um, one of my favorites is in her circumstances. Um, let's see here. What else we've got... Um, Wings of Honey Mise, wasn't it? Wings of Honey Mise, absolutely. Yeah. Not even Secret of Blue Water. Um, what are the other kind of big call out ones? Um, Abinomashi Micro Shopping Arcade was a pretty big one back oh, in the day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Aromatic. Um, and a handful of others, but Evangelion being kind of the, the big fish, so to speak. Yeah. Um, apparently, <clears throat> the big thing is that. Um, well, we'll get into it. <laughs> Suffice to say, <laughs> we'll this get was there. a yeah. We'll we'll, we'll get there. Uh, actually, you know what I can do? Um, I can throw up a little bit of the news item here. So for those curious, um, here's just kind of some uh, some of the ANN article filing for bankruptcy May 29th uh, in Tokyo District Court. Just sort of the short of the 40th anniversary of the studio. They had a statement. Um, your financial situation wor uh, worsened starting in 2012. That's 12 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, due to various factors, including a restaurant, yeah. um, establishing a mismanaged CG company, mm. giving large unsecured loans to executives, and that running one. its business operations if it was a small personal venture. Right. I don't see anything wrong with any of that. <laughs> All of them were, were, were choice proper decision making <laughs> things so you know Ooh. here's the thing about here's the thing about restaurants that's interesting about restaurants and it's much actually mm -hmm. like vineyards you have to be rich to start one yeah. and you have to commit money it's like a boat it hemorrhages a lot of money you'll have a period of time where it's really great and then it's gonna suck and restaurants are just like that and so mm -hmm. Why an anime would <clears throat> studio would? It's one thing if it's if an anime studio license, allows its licensing to be used right. in a restaurant, right? That mm -hmm. that happens all the time. Yeah, and that's safe. But when you go, oh, I'm actually going to take our money that we got from Evangelion and toss it into a restaurant making ramen, not the best idea. No, but that is actually pretty. Um. Um fairly benign compared to the oh here's a business loan mm -hmm. when are you going to pay it back mm -hmm. <laughs> okay yeah. that's fine we're okay with that how much interest do I have to pay interest what's that okay great thank you <laughs> you know I yeah. it's it you know that right there when you start doing stuff like that and then you know running as a small business venture I mean that's when you just you look at the management and you just go wow Yep. Somebody should have paid you off a long time ago to leave. Mm -hmm. so um, well, and if you read the Nintendo memoirs and some of the other stuff about the history of Gainax, yeah. you find out they, and we were talking about this in the, in the Discord, um, right. they basically, um, they wanted to do various, talk, they were really good at, at uh, organizing events. Like that was just something they, they, if you wanted to put on an otaku themed event, you called them in and it happened and a bunch of people showed up. So they did that for sci-fi conventions and anime conventions and figure conventions. And then they got to know the people in the industry because they would show up for these events and they'd sponsor and so forth. And so they said, you know, hey, we could actually partner with them to like make merch. So they did that. They found a General Products, which was a company to make otaku merchandise and like garage kits and such. Uh, and then that happened. Um, and then they were like, oh, that's how you do business, is you get somebody to give you money, you spend the money on the thing, basically. And you have, you know, a company name to push that money th uh, back and forth. Um, and then <clears throat> Gainax, something a lot of folks don't realize about Gainax, it's basically always been a holding company. Um, they don't have a staff of animators. 
They never have. Right. Uh, right. They would work with established studios to actually produce the animation. So it's not... You know, Gainax has always been, as I understand it, as, as Anno has explained it, half a dozen people, staff, who are all of these kind of college buddies and adjacent folks and so forth, got to make the business deals, right, and make sure the, 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 the thing actually gets made. Um, and uh, Evangelion, famously, was their last gasp. Like, they were basically out of money. They weren't going to be able to, you know, if, if Evangelion was on a success, they were going to shut down Gainax. And so Anno said, screw it, I'm going to throw everything into this. I'm going to put every idea I've ever had into this one show. Uh, and it, as they put it, it wouldn't stop making money. <laughs> it's a terrible problem. Mm-hmm. It's a and terrible problem. I literally just got a text somebody, a family member, asking me, are you the Nigerian prince who owes me money? <laughs> literally, just now. All right. Well, you know, uh, answer that. Anyway. Yes. Back to Guy next. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, you, you look at this and it's like, I was just thinking as you were talking about the history of Gainax, I was thinking I was thinking of like Otako no Go, the anime, you know, the Otakon yeah. animation. Mm -hmm. you show, I'm movie, like, yeah. oh, that was prescient. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, Gainax never did manage to make Otaku World, which I, I am sad about. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Evangelion did not, I mean, Evangelion had a... Um, slightly moderately high budget. So it was, it was a little more than average at the time. Um, good money, but not like absurdly high money. Um, and so yeah, they, they did not have a... a uh, it, it's why the animation is sometimes a little simple. Although, in fairness, they also said, you know, we always wanted to focus on the artistry of what we're making. You know, we weren't about saying we have to have movement every second. You know, we can hold on a shot if that's appropriate, um, but that, that is a thing. Um, so yeah, so it, it's always been just kind of a, you know, not great management right. and uh, and now it's just kind of boom. Um, funnily enough, um, so who gets right to Evangelion? Uh, Studio Kara is the answer to that. Studio Kara is the company that uh, Anno founded uh, after leaving Gainax, now we, we now know he left Gainax partly because of these issues. <laughs> he was like, "You, yeah. get, I'm going to start my own company over here where we can actually manage all this stuff." By the way, one of um, um, uh, one of the members of, of Gainax was arrested on tax evasion and like went oh, to jail. Right, yeah, like like jail time for this stuff. So yeah, it's it's a it's a big deal. Um, so yeah, um, and with everything going on. Anno has kind of taken over the rights to Evangelion. In fact, he's had that, those for a long time. Uh, uh, studio Kara is the studio that actually made the Evangelion uh, rebuild films. They just, like, put Gainax on there as a, you know, these are the people who originally made it more than anything else, you know? So you recognize what this is. We're putting this name here. That's it. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. Tangential About. connection. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, here's the thing. Um, Gainax still apparently has its hands in a fair number of pies, given the fact that there's st still money going around. Um, it's kind of complicated. Um, they still have, I believe, a video game um, arm. Um, although to be clear, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Gainax specifically, add, specifically added in its statement, it has no current affiliation to Studio Gaina, which is kind of a spinoff, uh, Fukushima Gaina, Gainax International, Gainax Kyoto, wow. Yonago Gainax, Gainax Niigata, and Gainax West. Those are all different companies. Right. Just to give you an idea how nuts this is. <laughs> um, Studio Kara has the Gainax trademark and is the manager of the tr trademark for Gainax. Um, but there's a lot of other bits and pieces you know, kind of scattered around. 
Um, so who knows what's, what's is that gonna, gonna go there. But Evangelion should be okay. That's under Kara. Also, let's be honest. Yeah. Like again, to, to our point, I was scrolling through um, Gainax's uh, like Wikipedia page. Name a Gainax anime from the past decade. Right. You know, um, they've been just kind of opening restaurants, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, th- that's one statement of, like, this has been a long time coming. Uh, we-, we all have been, I mean, I think we even talked about it, like, two years ago, just going, yeah, the, the blade is right there, just just waiting for the-, the switch to be thrown, you know, to, you know, chop everything off and to, yeah. you know, take it down. Exactly. Uh, and as they're as pointing out in chat, Studio Trigger, um contains uh, a number of the staff of Gainax. Uh, yeah. They're kind of the, the heir apparent of Gainax now. So in terms of like the animation side of things, they're really th- what that was. So yeah. Um, oh, you can hear the dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, our, yeah. our dog is having a lot of fun right now. Um, by which I mean she's, there's a bird outside or something. Squirrel. Um, squirrel. Squirrel. Exactly. <laughs> so do we think this is going to change anything in the industry? No. No. As long as the moon doesn't blow up. Right. don't get the moon blown up, then, you know, we're all good. Exactly. Um, um, Adam notwithstanding. (laughs) Keep Kaoru happy, and we should be okay. Uh, So, we'll see. It it seems, in this case, like a long time coming. Um, Yeah. Certainly not something that we're happy about but something that, that doesn't seem like it's going to completely destroy anything. Well, I was going to say, I do think, I was thinking about this when I read the part about it, like just before the 40th anniversary. Yeah. I almost feel like they just said, you know what? We don't, they, they maybe they had a self-realization moment where they're just like, you know, we don't actually have anything for the 40th anniversary. Mm, you know true. what I mean? And they're just like, you know what? We, we, we blew the wad. We, yeah. With Evangelion. And so it's okay. We can just go ahead and end it now. Everybody's where they need to be, and mm-hmm. that'll be it. Possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I like that idea. I think it's, it's quite yeah. possible. And uh, certainly, I'm, I'm sure folks in the industry were not shocked either. Oh, well. Um, thank you for the T1 sub, Kevin, by the way. Anyway, oh, nice. um, moving on, let's talk about this NHK documentary that dropped this week. Oh, yes. Anime in Crisis. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, now, we were talking, not a huge <clears throat> fan of the name. You know, the the headline was definitely written to yeah. get the clicks. Anime in yeah. Crisis, Japan's signature art form at risk. Uh, which, you know, With okay. such engaging commentators. <laughs> Yeah, the so th- this is NHK World, I believe, and mm-hmm. they are um, uh, the they're trying to reach a very broad audience, and so the content tends to be very generic um, and very. Brent, yeah. <laughs> how was your day today? <laughs> That's great. Let's talk about pause oh no that's in parentheses let's talk about yeah it was it was pretty bad it was yeah. just, um yeah. well th- that is true about the industry it, it is very yes. interesting what's what's going on in the industry right, right now <laughs> yeah uh it's sad and uh, obviously you know we're having fun with the people but right it was uh, it was it was noticeable um let me... but the content was interesting though yeah, and, and the, the thing is, and again, uh, to be clear, I, I think the headline was meant to, you know, draw on viewers. It is actually about uh, low wages in the industry and that kind of concern. Um, and let me see if I can pull up. I actually have a new uh, piece of software I'm using for this, which I love, but is a little, uh, I have to get used to it. Um, I just have to figure out how to uh, turn that off. And we should be good to go. There we go. Um, so the documentary is basically about, um, like I said, kind of low wages in the industry. They actually interview, and I do enjoy this. Um, they interview somebody at the um, Animator Dormitory Project, which yes. 
full disclosure, we've supported in the past financially mm -hmm. um, through OnCon. Uh, but basically, they, they provide cheap housing for animators working in the anime industry, a couple hundred bucks a month, basically, for, for full housing. And uh, what's great is some of the folks did not want to be uh, on camera, so they put little manga heads on top of yes. them. Um, I think it was quite clever, honestly. Well, yeah. when they were when they were doing this, like, and they announced ahead of time. By the way, we do this in kind of a, a way unique to anime. I was hoping for the Laughing Man logo from Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> it would have it would have fit perfectly. <laughs> it would have fit perfectly. But yes. uh, but they, they probably don't have the rights to that logo, so fair enough. Um, and so the, the the point of the documentary is that. Uh, the issue of low wages for especially um, young animators and how this is, mm -hmm. and I think they acknowledge this, this has been a thing for a long time, but today things have changed where there aren't enough people doing it despite <clears throat> those low wages. Mm -hmm. And so they're just not able to bring in enough folks. Uh, and to kind of point this out, because obviously people have, have complained about this and talked about this, um, they actually go to, um, there's a training program at Bandai Namco where they train young animators in how to animate, how to do all this kind of stuff. And they're actually hired. So they are getting paid to do this. Um, so there's obviously a significant investment in them. It's not just grabbing folks off the street. Or like, right. um, uh, Disney did the thing where they had they like essentially sponsored a program at UC, one of the University of California campuses, mm -hmm. and they got like Tim Burton and a bunch of the other animators through that 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 whole cycle. But that was you know we're creating a, a a program at a university. You go to university, take all the courses, you know, do all that, and then come to work for us. This is no, we're we're actually hiring you to learn it. So yeah, it's um, it's a significant thing, and like they're saying, yeah, this is this is something we're doing because we we need to. <laughs> yeah, I have to. Yeah, it it was kind of, um, you know, we we've actually been talking this for for a while now, the the yeah. low wages and and things like that, and what the graphic that they provided was a little bit jarring, where they show an age of the animators on the yeah, bottom. Pull that up here, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, and how much they're making. And I was looking at that, and I was just like going, thinking about my own job, what I do for a living. Um, yeah. So if you look at the 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 fifty the fifty four range, which is actually where I'm at, mm. um, they're earning less than forty thousand. Now I sell booze, buy and sell booze for a living. It's not a hard job, and I make more, way more than that, mm -hmm. or not way more, but more than that. Yeah. And I, it's just I'm like, okay, these are people with a talented skill, mm -hmm. talent and a skill and it's and it's an industry that is now booming yeah so this isn't like 1979 or 1980 where right. you know, projects are you know hard to get so it's kind of weird how they t talk about it, how even they're even projecting um right now uh 10 times what they're making now which i think is 20 billion mm -hmm. so you kind of go okay spread some love around a little mm -hmm. um yeah. you know um because because you know when you're starting off at 12 grand that's that's not good no. that's not a living wage and it's not like there isn't work now mm -hmm. yeah right right there is plenty of work out there so it, yeah. there's this huge disconnect between the zaibatsu as we like to call them um mm -hmm. and and the fact that the anime studios as they're pointing out in the com in, in this program which actually folks you should watch it's actually really interesting um, saying they have no leverage, yeah. um, you know, to negotiate. And, and, and this is the thing that, that, that is uh, helpful to understand that the context is that the, the studios are paid to make the anime. They're paid to draw and produce the anime by the rights holders, right? the, the publisher or what have you. So they don't get a profit share in that. They're, they're not making money off of the anime they made, that they make. They are like... Um, you know, if you want art drawn of your character, right, you hire an artist, you pay them 50 bucks, they send you a piece of artwork. If you then use that artwork somewhere else, you're not sending five bucks a month back to that artist. Yeah. You know, they, they, they got that money, that, that, that situation over, which is fine. The issue is that the amount they are being um, budgeted gives them very little space to pay people. 
Um, yeah. And it's what I, one thing I appreciate about this that, that graph is it's not like, you know, you start at 12000 a year, and then by the age 50, you're making $100,000 a year. Right. 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 You know, wages are low across the industry. You're just going to a living wage once you've been in there for, I don't know, 20 years or so. I can have soy with my ramen now. <laughs> that's basically what we're getting at. Is that that's the that's the high point of your life of, a, of of an animator, and so when you don't get any and and when you don't get any or if your studio doesn't get any royalties or anything like that, or, and you have no power to negotiate yeah. that, you know you, you have stark choices that you have to make, yeah. and so that's why these and so that's why they're like, I think they were saying actually I was thinking it was this guy. I was mm -hmm. saying that that parents are now telling their children, no, yeah. don't do this, don't go mm -hmm. into this industry. There, there's yeah. no money in it. You you you'll be miserable the whole time, and <clears throat> you know it's just one of those things where it's like the dorms are great, yeah, but it's but it's like a short term kind of thing here. You know, it's not going to work if it, if we don't have actual animators continuing, mm -hmm. and that exactly. should worry people because at the end of this they go well it's a choice of whether or not anime is going to survive or if it's going to thrive and i'm like yeah. thinking to myself well it's going to do both it's yeah. just that it's going to be korean and chinese and not japanese and uh, two things about that one is i i yeah. I, I, I was afraid it was going to end with you know they, they will survive or die and it's like, right no like anime will survive no. it'll it'll, yes. it'll it'll be a go the question is like um this is a, a crisis in the sense that anime could be very squeezed in the future where right. we go back to the, to the early 2000s where budgets were very low, animation was very cheap, um, you yeah. know, or we, we get to, to an area where we're making more Demon Slayers. Like, more of those, please. Yeah. Um, and to be clear, um, this, this is the, the other thing that kind of shocked me. Um, um, exactly to your point, there, there, there's this concern about, like, the strength of the Japanese industry versus the industry in other, in other, in other countries uh, and what that will do. Before we go any further, I, I should point out this can get into kind of weirdly racist territory because people get kind of yeah. you know, focused on, you know, well, if it's not being made by <clears throat> real Japanese people, that's a problem. It's like, what? You know, right. So we're, yeah. we're not going there. Um, right, right, right. The, the concern is the... Um, Those different um, environments work very differently than they do yeah. in Japan. Japan and, right. you know, um, that industry, you know, the industry is not going to work the same <laughs> if it's got all the, yeah. that, 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 that stuff going on. And so it's good. There are a lot of, lot of risks of doing that. Um, so it, it's hard to see where that's going to go. Um, do, 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 do. And uh, oh, and then uh, great point brought up by, by Kitamono in the Discord in the, in the chat. The other the other uh, element here is the internet. Yeah. If you want to be an independent animator and just draw your own stuff and put it online and potentially kickstart it, you can do that now. So there's not as much appeal for a young artist to get into the anime industry when like, well, I could just do it myself and. Maybe I won't get a living wage, but I won't get a living wage with you either. So I'll just, right. I'll just stay independent. <laughs> well, you know, and the benefit to having your, your doing it online yourself through Kickstarter is that also at the end of the day, if it happens to be wildly popular, you have actual intellectual property rights that you can, yep. you know, have, mm -hmm. which which animators don't yep. have to, uh, right now under the current system. Especially if you don't pay taxes. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Yeah. No, no. Um, pay your taxes. Yes, yeah. Pay your taxes. It's, it's a, it, it's a thing people have been doing lately. Um, but yeah, it's a that is a problem when the, the system is set up such that there's no incentive to join right. the industry. Um, the other problem too, which I literally just thought of, the industry is very mature, conceptually in terms of creativity. So mm -hmm. you're not joining a Gynax. You're not joining a studio where they're like, oh, we're going to change the world. We're going to bring these really interesting new stories. They're like, there's this really popular manga, and we're going to adapt that for 12 episodes. Um, nothing wrong with that, but it, it doesn't have the same feel joining a Sunrise back in the 70s or a lot of right. these other studios. So that's, that's a problem, too. <laughs> because, you know, 
why can't we do all isekai all the time? <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't exactly. make the Nigerian prince angry. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. It's it's hard to to say now. What do you think? And, and I should also point out, and this is another thing that kind of blew my mind. Uh, this documentary also includes a clip from the Prime Minister of Japan. Right. <laughs> talking. Saying, hey. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and saying basically, he uh, looking into the issue of. Uh, pay in the entertainment industry and this needs to be addressed uh and he's not saying like we're going to do xyz just saying like yes this is this isn't a concern for the country's like uh, uh health yeah so yeah it's a big deal um the question here is practically speaking how do you change this um as a studio you can go back to the production committee and say more money, please. But how do you convince the production committee? Because he, here's the thing. Um, you can negotiate and you can talk and so forth and so on, but like, there needs to be change on the production committee side to mm-hmm. say, we're going to be the first ones to raise the base price of an anime by 20%, let's say. Right. Um, whatever it is. <clears throat> how do you convince them to be the first one? Unfortunately, when I was watching this whole thing in the, in the back of my feeble little brain, um, I kept thinking about minors in in United States history mm-hmm. and how, like, you know, even today it's still somewhat of a problem. But, yeah. you know, you're going to have to unionize. Uh, they had to unionize in order to, to get that balance more yeah. e- equalized. And that's, mm-hmm. that's a big problem right now is that basically the production company, which is – the, the copyright holders, which is the the publishers and all this, that, and the other thing, are basically saying, "Thank you for making us billions of dollars. Here's your penny." Mm-hmm. And if if and the problem becomes is is on their side. Somebody, to your point, has to go. Okay, my company made ten billion this year. Maybe we can make nine billion and give another billion back to the production company so that we can keep making and so the problem is is that is that the the production companies don't care about what's being made mm. what they care about is what the profit is so if they can do moog and train over and over and over and over and over and over again yep. that's what they'll do mm. they're not going to be interested in doing something new because that's what what makes the money so you have to have a, a somebody who is forward thinking enough who wants to avoid union strikes because that's what's going to happen. True. Yeah. It, you know, it, then they're going to have to do that. It's uh, it's something at Trader Joe's. What a lot of people don't know about Trader Joe's is that the reason why you don't see union strikes at Trader Joe's is because Trader Joe's takes a portion of their profits and turns it around to and, their employees. And they're employee owned, aren't they? I think. Yeah, um. Well, I think. It depends on which one. Uh, there's Trader Joe's oh. West and Trader Joe's East. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so the uh, Treasures East, I think, is owned by Aldi, okay. and um, so Aldi turns their profit around and and says, mm. "Well, we're making more than enough. That's fine. I can afford my twenty trips to Italy this summer. So, <laughs> you know, why don't we pay our people some 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 money and mm-hmm. you know make them let you stay there and work here and do new things? Mm-hmm. So until you have somebody doing that who's forward thinking of that and willing to do that." And, and investors who are, who are willing to say, oh, you mean I'm only going to get a hundred million instead of a hundred five million? You know, mm-hmm. they, you know that. So, because otherwise, it really is going to get to the point where the animators are just going to throw up their hands and go, oh, okay, we strike. Yeah. Because I, I I don't see an alternative to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I hear you. Um, you know that makes makes a makes a lot of sense. Um, I also wonder if there aren't going to be more. Um, I'm going to use a phrase that sounds cynical or, or strange, but creative financial um, setups where companies go in for more profit sharing, as Kedemono is, is pointing out. If, if there's more like, we're not just going to make, we're not just going to get one lump sum, you know, at one point, and that's our entire right. thing, we're going to get a little money here and there, or we're going to do something else, or, you know, uh, we're going to make a percentage instead of a, a flat number, that kind of stuff. Um, 
I, I can see that being a, a potential there. Yeah, because if you can, I mean, honest to God, if they were able to get, like, the the people who made Mugen Train, if they're able to get, yeah. like, the royalties off of that, mm-hmm. they'll be like, yeah, sure, we'll make more, we'll stick around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> I mean, if you if you know that, that your performance, that your pay is based on your performance, not only are you willing to do better, mm-hmm. you have an incentive to do better, but also it, it's the profit is there, the, 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 the reason for you to be there. To, to be able to afford things and do the things that you want or, and to do the job that you want to do, yeah. then you're going to continue doing that. But if, if nobody gives you that that opportunity, then why, why would you stay? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we're also living a world of much greater choices for entertainment. So, yes. you know, this isn't a world where, you know, you have NHK and TV Tokyo and those that's the only options right. now like there's so many different things it's not like people are locked into anime i mean for god's sake it's nord vpn i mean all you have yeah. to do is have a nord vpn and then you just can watch whatever whatever you can't watch in your country you can watch somewhere else mm-hmm. using that and it's just a subscription service that's all it is yeah actually what people look is making a great point in chat that one of the complexities here is that anime is in a way an ancillary medium <laughs> Right. One moment, folks. Sorry. What's that, Lassie? Go see Bob. Go see Bob. Go see Bob. Let me close the door. <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make that work. Um. So yeah, the, in a sense, very superficial sense, the anime is one big ad. So if I'm publishing the Apothecary Diaries manga, and I'm paying for a an anime to goose sales of the manga, why do I want that to be expensive? Right. Yeah, that is that, that is one of the the, the big problems there. The, the big pushes there. Um, that's, that's a that's a that's a tough one. Uh, well, merchandising makes for what even the movie it's based on, depending on the movie. In fairness, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it works great if you're um, Star Wars, not if you're all these Star Wars knockoffs made in the three years after Star Wars. <laughs> the Turkish Star Wars that was brilliant. <laughs> Battle Beyond the Stars and all those, those great movies. Oh, uh, Battle Beyond the Stars! That was such a wonderful movie. I love that guilty pleasure. Oh yeah. So, I'm sorry. Side note. Yeah. Here, how do you merch something like Legend of the Overfiend? Okay, we're not going to go forward on that. I was just that was just an intrusive thought. Sorry. Um, strike that. Strike that from the record. I have seen <laughs> things. Um, <laughs> But yeah, exactly. It's, it's why Gate never got a sequel. Like a lot of things. Um, so apparently, and again, I don't know all the details. Uh, Chihaya Furu, um, the is it, is it Karada, the little the card game that oh, they play in Chihaya Furu, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Chihaya Furu came out not a huge success, but sales of the original or the manga or light novel skyrocketed, and that's why we got like four seasons of that anime. Um, it had a you know small but mighty fan base. Uh, the anime, which was fine, but because they were buying the original source material so much, that's why we got so much of it. So there's a lot of that stuff. Um, and uh, that is also kind of a factor. But the thing is now, and the reason why I say it's kind of not really true that it's an advertisement for, for, the, for the manga anymore is because like, the Japanese also recognize that anime is a big medium, especially overseas. Right? That, yes. That anime is its own thing people are consuming and, and talking about and making YouTube videos about. Um, and so it's it's elevated in the past few decades. Um, yeah, and, and what people are pointing out, the other the other weird thing too is that like in when is something cancelled in anime? Because like, you know, they can do one season of a thing and then not make more. It, was it canceled? Did it just not get a second season? 
we get a second season eventually. It's so weird when it's based on another property and it's kind of ongoing, where it's like, well, where do we cut the right. line? Complicated. Well, that was the whole Full Metal Alchemist problem. Yeah. You know, so they just went off in a different direction with the initial anime. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it that's... But, you know, it is. You kind of want to see what the rhyme or reason of it. Now, I know this is more Netflix than the actual studio, but, mm-hmm. you know, like, Comey Can't Communicate. Yeah. You know, Comey Can't Communicate did really well. Mm-hmm. And and it, it was very popular, and then suddenly, nothing. And it's yep. just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and um And now it's just kind of going into obscurity a little yeah. bit. And I, I so as I recall, yeah, the, so they did season two of that, right? Two seasons of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I think season two more or less caught up with the manga, so that might have been the same problem where they're like, "Well, yeah. do we want to go off? I don't know." Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. The other complexity too is that they're primarily looking for sales of the Japanese manga, like novels, etc. Um, I've I've gotten into some conversations with folks, American uh, fans of that in the past. They're like, well, I went and bought, you know, the light novel. And it's like, well, you bought the American release, which they paid a licensing fee three years ago. (laughs) Right. That's not going to, you know, that sale is not going to actually goose any sales in Japan. So it's it it helps a little bit in in a tertiary way. But. It's tough, and it, it makes the industry just kind of a, a very odd thing compared to Hollywood, where it's like, we make a movie, we want you to see the movie. make See the movie, do the movie, buy the merch, do all that. Um, anime is just kind of like, well, it's complicated. We're going to make a thing when? Yes. <laughs> no, what? Huh? Yeah, and originals don't make it any easier. Um, I was thinking just today about Girls in Ponzer where they made the first season of that and then they'll make as much of that as people want because it's their original IP. So they made a film and they made this and they made that. And like, there, it's not like there's a, uh, you know, the Star Wars trilogy that, right. Right, that, that somebody's planned out. It's, well, if we get the financing and if things come through, then we'll do this thing over here. Um, and that tells more story, but we're not building up to the big climax in five years or whatever right there's no there's no five-year plan here no there's no i remember it speaking of star wars i remember bloom county that comic strip i don't know mm. if any of you out there mm. in Chatland remember that one wow um and it was right after return of the jedi came out and it shows one of the characters blinkley um being told that the next installment wouldn't be for another 15 years this is 1984 wouldn't be for another 15 years and he pulls out the lifesaver as Luke Skywalker and kills the guy and goes Star Wars fans can't wait 15 years <laughs> you know but the point being is that there was a game plan and they're like no this is going to happen then this is going to happen and this is going to happen mm-hmm. and and to your point in anime it's just kind of like we're making the anime yes when yes okay here it is great thank you will we get more yeah <laughs> Sir, that wasn't a word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, again, also in fairness, if you follow a novelist, for example, mm-hmm. and they, they make a novel you really like, oh. Oh, God. are they going to do a sequel to that? Maybe. Maybe. Right. Or, or, or you can have a 30-year plan like George R. R. Martin <laughs> with Game of Thrones. Yeah. Years oh. between each yeah. book. I hope none of you are waiting for the last book there. I hope, I hope you all given up now, <laughs> please. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah, Girls and Ponder was an original, um, and uh, yeah, it, it was also like their their uh, their area had been greatly affected by the Great Tokyo Earthquake, and so they decided to place it there and theme it there to goose tourism a little bit. Um, yeah. and it became a really big deal actually for tourism over there, but it was just a, a fun. Um, that was kind of a, a secondary aspect to the anime, but yeah, it was basically. And this gets back to our point: uh, they made that the studio made that because they wanted something they owned and could make money off of. Right. So they're they're collecting the royalties off Girls and Panzer, not off the other anime adaptations that they were contracted to make. So that is that was that. Uh, it's complicated. It turns out it's complicated. 
Uh, that's the roundtable for this week. Hope you guys found that useful. And uh, we'll see you around. Yes. <laughs>